You know, the wonderful thing about God's presence, because what it, everything is about God's presence <laughs> and connecting with God's presence. Because when there's a lack of connection in God's presence, carnality takes over. <laughs> and it's so easy to be deceived when there's a lack of connection in God's presence. Everybody else will know it, but you won't. <laughs> and again, in the presence of the Lord, there's fullness of joy. There's a manifestation and fruits of righteousness. There's power. We become that new man over and over and over all the time where the word says he's in Christ as a new creation. All things pass away and all things become new. Well, we should be increasing more in Christ's character and less of our old character. Amen? That's why in his presence there is that arena where he not only does something powerful, he resets us. He resets us completely. He restores us to our first love. He renews us. <laughs> he refreshes us. So that that thirst and hunger comes back again. So the zeal for ho the house of God and the love of his presence is restored. It's not about pleasing man. It's about pleasing God now. And when that connection is made, it's no longer you that live, but he that lives. And we are in such a time and season where the enemy is trying to constantly bring us a disconnect. We get so concerned about our own lives that we lose the sight and the focus of the life of Christ that's supposed to be manifested. Paul said it powerfully. He desired a position to where he said, it's no longer I that live, but Christ that lives. And that could only be done through the presence of God. You know, when God shows up, revelations are released. You don't even know it. Things that are imparted in us that we don't even know yet. But they'll come. So in this place of position, I want to call this place that Paul called, it's no longer I that live, but him that lives, victory's position. Why? Because victory's position gives place for the divine nature. And the divine nature is Christ. The anointing is the divine nature. And you and I must give place for it. Not reject it and not fight with him. But surrender. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, victory's position Anybody ever lose a battle? How about would you like to win every single one? <laughs> Jesus didn't lose one battle, did he? Well, if Christ is in me and you, then we got no excuse for losing the battle. Oh, glory. I'm telling you about to explode here any minute. If I am left, if I take off, my sneakers will remain. Because there's no red sneakers in heaven. <laughs> that I know of anyways. <laughs> Woo! Second Chronicles goals, 2016. We've all know about this, but we're going to refresh ourselves so we don't get refleshed. We get refreshed. So without a refreshing, there's always a refleshing. Oh, glory. In verse 16, now we know that the king of Judah was being attacked all over and there's no way he could win this war. So he went to the Lord and asked for help. And 
the Spirit of the Lord came upon an individual and, and spoke this word. And he said in verse 16, Tomorrow will go out against them. They will surely come up by the ascent of Ziz. And you will find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jarel. You will not need to fight in this battle. Does everybody see this? You will not need to fight in this battle. In other words, he's, look, it, he didn't mean that you wouldn't be a part of this because it's not. He's saying you don't need to fight. Your physical arena does not need to fight in this battle. Position yourselves and stand still and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you. You, O Judah and Jerusalem, and do not what? Fear. Why? Because fear always causes defeat. Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow will go out against them, for the Lord is what? Is with you. Now, this is powerful. This is called a position of victory or victory's position. But he was saying here, we don't fight. But God fights for us. He's saying, look, don't worry about this. You don't have to fight. Just go. Just go. And I'm going to fight for you. Victory's position. Now, we know that in a war there are many battles. There are battles over territory, whether bodies' territory or land's territory or heavenly territories. These battles are over there. War, but and we got to come to an understanding and constantly maintain that understanding that your war, your battle is against the Nephilim race. Does everybody get it? That's what you're fighting with. You are not fighting with humans. It's just humans being influenced by demons or devils or uh, giants, hybrids. There's shapeshifters. There's aliens. There's dragons. There's scorpions. There's vipers. All of these things that are in the unseen realm are utilizing humans to do their bidding in the physical realm. Amen? The war is to control governments, religions, the economy, so people can be controlled without them even knowing it. This place, <laughs> uh, how can I explain this? These are places where individuals get caught up when they're disconnected from God's presence. You know, think about this. How many people realize about so-called Christians, amen, amen, that promote things that are displeasing to God? So if they promote things that are displeasing to God, it's because there's a disconnect in God's presence. Does everybody get it? And when there's a disconnect in God's presence, they are not spiritually positioned, are they? Does everybody get this? It's a disconnect, and that's one of the things the, love, the devil loves to do. He wants to disconnect us from the presence of God. And he puts us in a state of fear and survival, and then there's not fully trust in God, and there's not surrender of God. And the one main thing that comes into play is man's will supersedes God's will then. Only God's will can be manifested in our life when we are connected with God's presence. Amen. Does everybody get this? Oh, hallelujah. Victory is position. Man, there's a lot of battles, and we need to have victory in every single one of them. In James chapter 1. A couple of things about accessing this position and things that prevent us from accessing this position. Now there's something we got to grab hold of and understand that to get positioned in this arena where it's victory's position, because we get to this position, we get spiritually positioned where we are aligned with the things of God. And when we are in position, it allows the divine nature of Christ to battle for me and you. So it's no longer you that do it, 
But he uses you. He uses your mouth. He uses your feet. He uses you. But it is until we are positioned in this place where the divine nature takes over. James chapter 1, verse 21. What does it say? Therefore, we do what? Lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to what? Save your souls. He says what? Be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in the mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he is. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and does what? Continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work. This one will be blessed in what he does. If any among you thinks he's religious and does not bridle his tongue but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is useless. Well, what's he saying here? This is powerful. He's saying, first of all, lay aside all sin. Why? Because that will prevent you from accessing this position. Be careful what comes out of your mouth. Amen? Because that's what will prevent you from accessing this position. He says, be a doer of the word. That means that you and I are to live in the word and practice the word. That is a part of us. You know, many people know the word, but they're not free because they don't put it into practice. You and I are to not only know the word, believe the word, receive the word, and execute the word. Let's go a little further. Again, verse 27. Is everybody there? He says, do what? Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans, widows, their trouble, and keep oneself unspotted from the world. So you and I must be what? Unspotted from the world. In other words, from the world's lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, pride of life, the belief system of the world, of its influences, by not agreeing with unfruitful works of darkness. That's why the word says, come out from among them and don't touch what is unclean and I'll be a father to you and you'll be my sons and daughters. Victory's position. There's a way of accessing it and things that prevent us from accessing it. In 1 John chapter 5, First John chapter 5 and verse 3. Oh, hallelujah. For this is the love of God that we keep his what? His commandments. And his commandments that are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Overcomes the world. So there must be a, born, a state of being which is called born again to overcome the world. That is called the divine nature of God in me and you. That is reigning in me and you. That is a born again state of being. Because there's a lot of people that are out there that are in a state of being of just saved. But they're not in a born again state of being where they're overcoming. That's why their belief systems are different. That's why their interpretation of the word of God is different. Why? Because of the lack of connection in God's presence. They have connection to the leather, but not of God's presence. Is everybody okay? Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Now, um, for whatever, verse uh, 4, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, which is what? Our faith. 
So faith is the connection with the creator. Why? Because it's associated with all trust, surrender. Again, it's not only the connection with his word, but it's the connection of his what? Presence. That's why it's important with corporate worship. When you come into corporate worship, there isn't any strong, anything stronger than corporate worship. And when you come into that corporate worship, it is an opportunity for you to connect with God's presence. That's why the word says something, forsake not to assemble, which many people do. And they wonder why. They're easily deceived, manipulated. And they're in the flesh. There's worry and fear and all kinds of other garbage. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. So we must maintain a level of faith, don't we? In fact, the word says that anything that's not of faith is what? Sin. So obviously you and I got to keep sin out of our life, don't we? That doesn't mean we won't make it a mistake, but we've got to keep sin out of our life. In verse 3, let's speak it. For though we walk in the physical, we do not war according to the physical. Does everybody understand that? I don't like to use the word flesh there because mo many people misinterpret it as the works of the flesh. For though we walk in the physical, we don't war against the physical. For the weapons of our warfare are not what? carnal, but they are mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all or execute all disobedience when your obedience is what? When your obedience is fulfilled. Hmm. In other words, you and I got to constantly remove thoughts that are contrary to the mind of Christ. So that means that you and I must maintain the mind of Christ in every area. We must think the way God thinks. We must see the way God sees. So in this, there's that area of access to where you and I are maintaining the mind of Christ. And what will deny access is when we don't. People are caught up on so many worldly fables and myths. And it doesn't work that way. In Ephesians chapter 6, many religious fables and myths. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. You know, I, I suggest today, if you get an opportunity to pull out your prayer booklet and pray the prayer of breaking off labels. Break off labels today. That was put in my spirit this morning. Breaking off labels because you don't realize how many labels you placed on your own self. It's called the label breaking prayer, I think. Ephesians 6.10 Let's speak it. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might and put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles or trickery of the devil. So he's saying, look at this is a requirement of accessing that pos victorious position. Put on the whole armor of God. If you're in a war, you don't go out with no armor. Verse 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places, none of the words, fallen angels, and Nephilim race. Verse 13. Therefore take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in, every, in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Does everybody get it? So there's an area where you and I must put on the full armor of God every single day. The enemy knows where you haven't, and it will prevent you from being 
in position when you don't. In 1 John chapter 2. First John chapter 2 and verse 24. Simple, powerful teaching. It's a reality. You know, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. I'm telling you, I, I've seen a whole other arena of everything of this. What did he say? The way. That's, in other words, he's expressing to us, not only is it connected with the feast of the Lord and so forth, but it's also associated with a way of escape. He says, I am the way. I am the way of escape. I am the truth. What is the truth that represents the true reality? I am the truth. I am the way. <laughs> and I am the life because there's no other life without it. That's why he said, follow me, right? There's no other life, true life, without Christ. It's impossible. Amen? Amen. And verse 24, let's speak it. Is everybody there? Amen. Therefore, let that abide in you which you heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that He has promised us eternal life. These things I have written to you concerning those who try to what? Deceive you. Listen, this is constant. Everywhere you go, everything you do, the enemy is going to try to deceive you. That's his job, and he does it well. Satan's greatest weapon is deception, and his power is fear. In verse 27, he said, But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you, and you do not need anyone to teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things, and is true and is not a lie, and just that it has taught you, you will abide in him. Now, he's talking about the anointing, as the person. And we know that the anointing is the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. He's saying you're to abide in this, you're to practice this, which will produce fruits of righteousness. Why? Because the anointing is the divine nature of God. Does everybody get this? The anointing is the divine nature of God. So you and I must get, get in that place where we have access to this position so that the divine nature can be expressed. It is not expressed without position. The divine nature is never expressed without positioning. It's the carnal nature that is expressed without positioning. But the divine nature is expressed when positioned. Psalm 24. You know, when you, ever, you know, when you think about it, in the Old Testament, man, they went through stuff. I mean, they went through all kinds of stuff. <laughs> I mean, even, even, in the, even when the apostles, look at all the torment and torture they went through. You know, people don't realize that your trials and tribulations are testings of God. They are looking, he's looking to see if you are faithful and loyal. He's not looking to see if you're perfect. He's looking to see if you're loyal. King David was not perfect, but he was loyal. He made mistakes. Man, did he make mistakes and brought a lot of stuff on. But God said he was a man after his own heart because King David tasted the presence of God. 
And when he got disconnected, he made stupid mistakes. But when he got connected, because this was a man that used to sit in front of the ark of God and radiate the presence on him. And he knew God's presence. That's why he set up worship teams 24 hours a day. Because he loved the presence of God. But when he was disconnected from the presence, he made bad decisions. Psalm 24 and verse 3. Is everybody there? Amen. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord or into God's presence? Or who may stand in his holy place or in God's presence? He who has what? Clean, Clean hands. And a what? Pure. pure heart. That pure heart means humble and contrite. Humble. Why? Because the word says God rejects the what? Proud but gives grace to the humble. So you think you're going to get in position with a prideful heart? No, you will not be allowed in that position. He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who's not lifted up his soul to a what? An idol, nor sworn deceitfully. He, will, he shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is Jacob, the generation of those who what? Seek him and who seek your face. Clean hands, touch nothing unclean. A pure heart is a humble and contrite. Again, God rejects the proud but gives grace to the humble. He said, look at, you will have access. These are things that prevent access. He said, the removal of all idols, peop of people, places, and things that are between you and God. That will prevent access. How many of you know your own family can be an idol to you? Your wife, your children, your husband. Your job, your money, all of these things can be an idol to you. And you don't even realize it. You know, I always hear in this religious uh, act, uh, it's always God, family, and your job. Or your church. No, it's God, God, and God. When it's God, God, and God, everything falls into place. Is everybody okay? Because you can't maintain your family without God anyways. Oh, hallelujah. So we're to remove all of these idols and restructure, reset. Put things in divine order. That's why he says, seek the kingdom of God and all things will be added to you. But it says something important. Seek his righteousness. And that's in his presence. So when we do all these things and we submit to all of these things, God allows us access to this position, allowing victories position and in it, when we are in this position we overcome all the attacks of the enemy all over all of them second peter chapter one second peter chapter one hallelujah, hallelujah. everybody getting this Listen, we are in a time right now where it is essential. Whoa. People are easily being swayed. Touching things they shouldn't. Allowing idols. All, not realizing. That's why people can even come to church and worship but not get connected. Because these things are still in the way. First Peter chapter 1. Is everybody there? In verse 2, please. Come on. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I say Second Peter? Okay. Let's speak it. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord as his divine power, his what? Divine power has given to us all things. And where is that divine power? That divine power is in the divine nature. It's in the anointing. Has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which we have been given to use to us exceedingly great and what? Precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature. Having escaped 
the corruption that is in the world through lust, having escaped. In other words, how are you escaping it? You're overcoming it. You overcome it. You can't escape anything you can't overcome. And that is by being positioned so that the divine nature can express himself and do your battle. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith, virtue, and to virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, self-control, to self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted and even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure, for if you do these things, you will what? Never stumble. Why? Because you'll maintain position. For an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This divine power is the anointing. And the anointing is the divine nature which battles for you and through you. So we must get out of the way, carnally, amen, and allow the new nature to cooperate with the divine nature established by positioning yourselves spiritually and physically. Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. How many of you know your associations can interfere your access? People of association. You can be associating with people that are preventing your access. It's because God is saying, if you can't discern that that person ain't right, is not a part of my will in your life, then I can't trust you. And you will not have access to this position. Why, what does he say? Bad company corrupts what? Good habits. In verse 24, Colossians chapter 1, verse 24. Let's speak it. Now I rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up my flesh what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ for the sake of his body, which is the church of which I became a minister according to the stewardship from God, which was given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. The mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations, but now has been revealed to his saints. To them, God willed to make known that what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among Gentiles, which is what? Christ where? In you. Now, Christ is the divine nature. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Him we preach, warning every man, teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. To this end, I also labor, striving according to his working, which works in me mightily. Christ in you, the hope of glory, the divine nature, the divine power, the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. Why? So that he can, he can be expressed and released through you as we are positioned. 1 John chapter 4. First John chapter 4. It's one of the things that we need to do a self-examination and ask ourselves, am I positioned? Is there anything that's been denying my access? Have I agreed with everything that allows my access so that I can be positioned all the time? 
So it gives the opportunity for the divine nature to express himself through my mouth, through my hands, through my feet, through my presence, because it's his presence, it's no longer his. And every area of our life and all of our decisions and everything that we do. Remember, the enemy is just trying to contaminate us to get us disconnected from that position. He'll do everything he can. That's his job. And he does it very well. But the anointing can outwit anything that the devil brings. But the devil can outwit anyone that's not under the anointing. Or disconnected from God's presence. Oh, glory. Is everybody okay? Yeah. What did I say to go? First John chapter 4? Verse 4. Let's speak it. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because he who's in you is greater than he's in the world. Wow. They are of the world. Therefore they speak as the world of the world, and the world hears them. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who does not does not, is not of God, does not, what? Hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, us, beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. Now, this is not lust. This is love. And this is a different love. This is called divine love. People can love one another, but there's a difference between divine love. People say they love God, but they're not in love with God. And there's a difference. He is in you, is greater than he's in the world. In you, the anointing is the divine nature of Christ. But again, we've got to be able to cooperate with all the things to get us positioned so the divine nature can be released. Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. And I'll close at Romans 8. Maybe. God willing. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen after this, you know. Verse 31. we got to be ready in season and out, right? Amen. Let's speak it together. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be what? Against, Against us. Now, does that bring victory? Amen. You betcha. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall we, he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen. Who is even at the right hand of God who also makes intercession for us? <laughs> who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or per persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sore? As it is written, for your sake, we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present or things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing separates us, but we allow a breach of love to come between us and God. And in that breach, it is restored in God's presence. Everything is restored. That's why in his presence brings refresh, restore, reconnect, reposition. Amen? Everything. So when there's a disconnect of God's presence, you are not in position. Amen? So we have to submit. We have to battle just to get into that position and fight and overcome those arenas so that we can have access to the, 
victory's position so that divine nature can be released and constant victory can be contis, continuous. Is everybody okay? Amen. Praise God. Father, we are honored and blessed for your word this morning. And we ask, Lord, to continue to bring us counsel, correction, direction, and conviction in those areas where we have been misled and led out of position in any way whatsoever. Expose those idols. Expose those things that cause us to be misled and allow us to get into places. Our brother Paul said that I want to be positioned where it's no longer I that live, but him that lives in us so that your word can be manifest as more than conquerors, as Christ is in us, as a greater than he is in the world so that the divine nature and divine power can be released in every position so that we lose no battles and make no excuses in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Praise God. You may prepare your hearts for communion and bring any tithes and offerings that you have.